All right, guys, BLM here back with a new video. In this video, we'll be continuing off my Survivor What If series. This time, we're going to be talking about what if every Final Four had forced fire making. Obviously, forced fire making is this twist that was introduced during Survivor 35 that made it so that the final immunity winner had to give immunity to someone else. And then the two people that don't have immunity at that point go into a fire making challenge. And that is how the final three is determined, not through a standard vote that you would expect from every season before that. And considering that this now looks like the way that we're going to be ending every season of Survivor US for some reason, I might as well go through the history of Survivor up until Survivor Game Changers, the last season that didn't have this twist, and talk about how those seasons would have played out if this had been a thing during those seasons. Now, this format doesn't necessarily make much sense to do if you have a final two. It kind of makes it weird where there's this forced fire making at final four, but then you still have a standard final three round. However, I decided to still look at every scenario as if that was the case with seasons that have final twos. So with that being said, let's start off with Survivor Borneo. We're at the final four. Kelly wins immunity. And I do think at this point she does save Sue. And the reason for that is obviously she votes to save Sue initially though she does eventually change her mind and votes out sue instead to keep richard in the game but i do think her first instinct before she knew the vote was going to be tied was to save sue so i do think she would do that here and in turn we get a rich versus rudy fire making challenge and i'm very much inclined to believe that rich wins this as rich was someone that was very much known as the person that makes fire he does win the fire making immunity challenge earlier in the season so i do think rich is more likely to beat rudy that means we get to a final three of kelly rich and sue and in this scenario i do think kelly still wins final immunity the question is who does she take to the end and again, like considering her first instinct at the final four was to vote out Rich and she had had a much closer relationship to Sue throughout the season, I would say that she votes out Rich at the final three. Now, this could obviously be wrong. And if she does take Rich to the end, I think we still get a very similar scenario at the final two where Rich does win. But I do think she more than likely takes Sue. And in that scenario, I do think Kelly actually wins. If Kelly is against Sue, I mean, I do think Sue was more active within the game than Kelly was, but I do think the way that the players were looking at the game at the time was that Sue was someone that who couldn't win at the end. I mean, if we're running through the actual votes themselves, I, I do feel like people like a Jervis and a Colleen and a Jenna are very much inclined to vote for Kelly over Sue. But Kelly really just needs one more vote. Now, can she get it? Probably, but I'm not entirely sure. Because, like, we look at the scenario here, I, I do think Rich and Rudy are probably more inclined to vote for Sue. They were closer to Sue than to Kelly. So I do think that's probably the case. It really comes down to Sean and Greg. I don't know what Greg does. I mean, I don't even know if we have any real idea of, of how Greg perceived Sue. I would assume he didn't like her. I mean, many of the Bagongs didn't. But then again, at the same time, he didn't seem to like Kelly either. So I do think he's very much up in the air. And someone like a Sean is someone that obviously got into arguments with Sue, but was also someone that joked around with Sue a lot. And I do think there was some camaraderie there. So for all I know, Sue might win this jury vote. I am inclined to think Kelly wins. I, I do think Greg probably leans Kelly. And to be honest, even the Sue votes from like Rich and Rudy aren't even guaranteed in that, right? So I do think Kelly probably ends up winning this. From the Australian Outback, we have Colby winning Final Four immunity. I think he very blatantly saves Tina. And then we get a fire making challenge between Keith and Elizabeth. To be honest, it doesn't really change much. I, I think Keith is probably more likely to win against Elizabeth due to us seeing Keith do more around camp. But I mean, at the end of the day, again, it doesn't matter. Either way, Colby and Tina still probably end up as the final two and we get the same result. From Survivor Africa, we have Kim having final immunity and I do think she goes and saves Ethan, which leads us to a fire making challenge between Lex and Tom. Lex did win the fire making immunity challenge earlier in the season. So I am inclined to think that Lex does beat Tom. But again, either way, I think we get the same result. I think Kim still wins final immunity and in turn takes Ethan to the end of the game where he still probably gets the exact same votes. Now for a more interesting one in Survivor Marquesas, where at the final four, Vesepia wins immunity and in turn saves Kathy. Now through this, we get a fire making challenge between Leah and Pascal. And I really don't know how this goes. I mean, we obviously don't have much information about how good they were at fire making ch challenges, but 
if Nalia does end up winning, we get a very similar result. I mean, we still get a final two of Vesepia and Nalia, where Vesepia probably wins. However, if Pascal does win this, I think we essentially get Vesepia having to pick who wins the game. Because in this scenario, we have a final three of Vesepia, Kathy, and Pascal, where Vesepia more than likely wins final immunity. I mean, she obviously beats Kathy in the original challenge, and I, I would feel like she would probably beat Pascal as well. And in turn, she has to pick who to go to the end with, Pascal or Kathy. And I feel like if she goes with Pascal, I do think Pascal beats her. And I do think Kathy beats her. So essentially, Vesepia becomes the decision maker on who wins the game. I do think she's more inclined to take Kathy to the end in that scenario where she doesn't really have a chance of winning the game. But either way, that one is one of the first times that we do get a radically different result from what we originally had. On Survivor Thailand, we have Brian having Final Four immunity. I do think he goes and saves Clay. I do think we get a fire-making challenge between Jan and Helen. And in turn, I do think Helen probably beats Jan. Again, no real proof of this, but considering how terrible Jan seemed to be at pretty much everything, uh, I would assume Helen beats her. But then we probably get the same result with Brian winning Final Immunity and voting out Helen at the Final Three anyway. So doesn't really change much. In the Amazon, we do have Jenna winning Final Four immunity, and I'm inclined to think that she saves Matthew. I think she very much thinks at that point that Matthew is her best chance of winning the game. So in turn, we do get a Rob versus Butch fire-making challenge, and I think Rob Sestanito goes out and forth here. I do think Butch completely blows Rob away. Obviously, Butch was known for making fire at camp, so much so that they burnt the camp down. So, I mean, I'm very inclined to think that Butch wins that challenge, but I think we get the same result anyway, where I, I do think Jenna wins final immunity and votes out Butch at three anyway, and same jury votes apply. Now for Pearl Islands, and this one's kind of tough to assess. Obviously, in the original Pearl Islands, the final four immunity challenge was won by the jury <laughs> for some reason. Again, a really weird twist that they threw in there, but Johnny Fairplay was technically the person in first in the actual competition, so we'll give the win to Johnny Fairplay. I do think he, here he does probably save Lil. I do think he thought Lil was an easier person for him to beat at the end than Sandra. So I do think that's the case, which means we have a fire making challenge between Dara and Sandra. That one could really go either way. I'm inclined to think Dara beats Sandra, but again, it, it really is up in the air. Obviously, if Sandra ends up winning it, we get the same result. Nothing really changes. But if Dara ends up winning, I do think Dara wins the season. I think Dara is much more able to win that final immunity challenge than Fair Play or Lil. And in turn, I do think she wins the jury votes against either of them. But even more so against Lil. I think in, against Lil, she probably wins unanimously. Now for Survivor All-Stars, where here we have Amber having Final Four immunity. She very obviously saves Rob, which means we get a fire-making challenge between Rupert and Jenna. Very, very inclined to believe that Rupert wins that fire making challenge, though. Again, who really knows? But either way, I think we get the same result. I think Boss Rob still wins final immunity and votes out whoever is not Amber at the final three. It doesn't change much. Now, from Vanuatu, we have Chris having final four immunity. I do think at this point he saves Twyla. Obviously, Twyla was the person that he was planning on taking to the end. So I do think that happens. And then we get a Scout versus Eliza fire making challenge again this one could go either way i would guess scout would win as i do know at that point scout was more involved in the camp life than eliza but i mean like really it's like it doesn't really matter as obviously if scout wins same result if eliza wins i do think eliza could have won that final immunity challenge but in turn i do think she probably takes chris to the end and i think there's still a very good chance that chris ends up winning with the votes of twyla scout Chad and Sarge. So really, Chris was winning that season no matter what anyway. Now for Palau. And I mean, this one's really easy because we did get a fire making challenge. Obviously, Tom wins immunity at final four. I mean, I think he saves Katie thinking Katie is the easy beat at the end. Ian and Jen go to fire making, which they did in real life. And Ian won. And then we get the same result. I mean, I don't think anything changes here. From Guatemala. We do have Rafe having Final Four immunity. I do think he saves Stephanie. I, I think, again, Stephanie was his very easy beat at the end. So then we get a Danny versus Lydia fire making challenge. And obviously, we get the same result for the season if Danny ends up winning. But if Lydia ends up winning this challenge, I do think Rafe actually wins the season. It's kind of funny how Rafe actively sabotages his own game by keeping Danny in the game. But again, if he gets to the final three with Rafe, Stephanie, Lydia, Lydia's not winning that final immunity challenge. There's absolutely no way. More likely, Stephanie wins that challenge, and she takes Rafe to the end. Rafe ends up beating her in probably a unanimous vote. 
Now for Survivor Panama, where here we have RS having Final Four immunity. I do think he saves Suri, which means we get a fire making challenge between Terry and Danielle, where obviously Terry would beat Danielle. Obviously, Terry taught Danielle how to make fire in the actual Final Four. So I think it's very likely Terry beats her. And in this final three of RS, Suri, and Terry, more than likely, Terry still doesn't win final immunity and still gets voted out at three, which leads to an RS and Suri final two. And I've talked about this in the past that I'm very inclined to believe that RS beats. Suri in the final two. I know many people don't agree, but I think if we look at the jury votes, I think RS has three absolutely locked jury votes in Austin, Sally, and Terry. While Suri does have the jury votes of Shane and Danielle, it really comes down to Bruce and Courtney who decide the winner. I'm inclined to think that Courtney votes for RS. I do think Bruce probably votes for Suri because Bruce is very anti RS, but I do think Courtney votes for Aris, though, I mean, again, it is up in the air. I do think Suri definitely still has a shot, but I am inclined to think that Aris wins that final two. Now for Cook Islands, and obviously we're into the final three era of Survivor. Obviously, we still have three more final twos to talk about, but from this point forward, this should be a much simpler process to run through. So moving on to Cook Islands, at the final four, we did have Ozzy win immunity. And this is a tough decision, I feel like, on who he saves. Because there's a couple ideas here. First up, I do think he was closer to Sundra out of the people in I-2-4, and I do think he also thought Sandra was pers a person that he could easily beat. So I do think there's an idea that maybe he takes Sandra to the end. However, at this point in Survivor history, Ozzy was very much hung up on taking the honorable approach. He was very much on wanting to take the best to the end, and through that, I do think there's a chance he takes Yule to the end as well. I think there's a serious argument for both, though either way, we get the same result, if I'm being honest. Like, if he takes Sandra, that means Yule and Becky go to a fire-making challenge, Yule probably wins and then you'll still wins in the jury vote against him in a five to four vote or if it's the other way it's obviously the result that we did get on the actual season where you'll gets taken to the end and we do get a fire making challenge between becky and sundra it doesn't really matter the only thing that could change anything is just perception the perception of you'll being taken to the end but outside of that i do think the votes really just stay the same now from fiji we do have dreams having final four immunity and obviously there is the debate of like does he give up immunity to Yao now knowing that he has a second chance to stay in the game I don't think he does still I, I do think he keeps it and probably gives the immunity to Cassandra I do think there's an argument that he could give it to Earl especially because Cassandra was considered the backup vote during that vote but I do think he was obviously much closer to Cassandra throughout the game so I do think he gives immunity to Sandra which means that we get a fire making challenge between Yao and Earl and I do think Yao man beats Earl Yao was someone that we were shown making fire around camp. And in turn, I do think Yao wins the game if he's in the end against Cassandra and Dreams. However, if it's the other way where Dreams saves Earl, that means Yao Man beats Cassandra in fire making. And we get the final three that people talk about of like Earl and Yao Man who wins out of those two. Again, I'm inclined to believe Earl wins based on the fact that we've heard postseason that Earl wins and Yao Man has even said that Earl wins despite the fact that during the reunion show the jury said that Yao would win. I still do think Earl would win in that jury vote though it's obviously very much up in the air. Now from Survivor China where we have Amanda having Final Four immunity I do think she saves Courtney which leaves us with a Todd versus Denise fire making challenge and I literally couldn't tell you who wins this. I think it's so much up in the air no clue at all obviously the results the same if todd ends up winning however if denise ends up winning the challenge i do think more than likely amanda wins the jury vote I, I do think all the votes that went towards todd do end up going towards amanda instead with the exception of someone like a john robert who probably puts his vote on denise but outside of that i do think it's a very similar result but just all the votes on amanda and we're going to be talking about amanda again because we have survivor micronesia where amanda also wins final four immunity here and here, I do think she saves Parvati, which leads to a fire-making challenge between Natalie and Suri. And again, this is another one that's like, who knows who really wins this? Obviously, we know that Suri sucked at fire based on what we saw in Survivor Panama. So if Natalie does end up winning, then that's at least a change. But more than likely, we get the same result at the final three where Natalie gets voted out and we get to the final two with Parvati and Amanda with the same exact result. 
Now for Survivor Gabon, where we have Susie having Final Four immunity. I do think she very clearly saves Maddie, as Maddie was the person that she was the closest to. And in turn, we get a Bob versus Sugar fire making challenge, where I think Bob very clearly wins that. We get a final three of Bob, Susie, and Maddie. And coming into this, I was very inclined to believe that Maddie wins this jury vote, as I mean, when I think about Gabon, I think about, oh, Maddie was almost the winner of the season. He almost won the game, but... I kind of forgot that Sugar's on the jury now over Susie. Because whenever I think of this scenario, I usually always think of it as Bob, Maddie, and Sugar. Not Bob, Maddie, and Susie. But because Susie is on the jury here, that takes away a vote for Maddie and gives Bob another vote. So more than likely, Bob wins the game here in a 4-3 to three vote. I do think Maddie gets the votes of Randy, Crystal, and Kenny. While Bob gets the votes of Marcus, Charlie, Corinne, and Sugar. So somehow Bob still ends up winning here. Now for Survivor Token Chains, where JT has immunity here. I do think he more than likely saves Steven. I do think he was 100% loyal to Steven all the way through. And through that, we do get an Aaron versus Taj fire making challenge. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. Either way, we get the same result where JT wins final immunity and wins at the end. So doesn't really change anything. Now for Survivor Samoa, where Russell has final immunity, I do think he takes Natalie, as again, he thought Natalie was the biggest GOAT of the season. And there's the fire-making challenge between Brett and Mick. If Mick wins, obviously we get the same result. I think Natalie still wins the game. However, if Brett wins, I think Brett wins the game, pretty much getting every vote outside of John Fincher and Shambo. And that moves on to Heroes vs. Villains, where again, Russell has final immunity. And again, I think he makes... The wrong decision where he more than likely takes Sandra again thinking Sandra was the biggest goat on the season and that leads to a Parvati versus Jerry fire making challenge I don't know who wins this I mean I'm inclined to think that Jerry wins it though again it's really just up in the air it really doesn't matter either way Sandra still wins a jury vote against either of them obviously if Parvati wins it's the same scenario we saw and in the Sandra Jerry Russell final three I think we get a very similar jury vote though I do think there's a chance Jerry gets Colby's vote I do think also through that she doesn't get Parvati's vote and could even lose Danielle's vote at that point too so I mean really uh, Sandra was gonna win the game no matter what at that point in the season now I move on to Nicaragua where Fabio has final four immunity I don't know who he takes. To be honest, it doesn't matter. Fabio wins at the end anyway against everybody at the Final Four. But this is the conundrum here is that obviously we saw on the season that the votes did become between Sash and Holly as the show portrays it at that point as Fabio was upset at Sash. So because that you would think that, well, does that mean that Fabio wanted to take Chase to the end? So does that mean that he saves Chase, which means we get a Sash versus Holly fire making challenge? Or is that just like misdirection and really he was still going to take Sash to the end, which means we get a Chase versus Holly fire making challenge? It really doesn't matter. Again, like no matter who wins, it doesn't matter. Fabio wins, but I do think a lot of this is a big question mark. I'm inclined to think that he takes Sash to the end and that more than likely Chase beats Holly in fire though. Again, for all I know, Holly beats him. It really doesn't matter. Now for Survivor Redemption Island, where we do have Rob having Final Four immunity. And this is the thing here. I think there are a couple ways to go about this. I think there's the initial thought that he more than likely saves Philip because he wanted Philip at the end, which means that we get an Ashley versus Natalie fire making challenge. And who really knows who wins that? But there's also the second thought here of him saving Natalie so that Philip goes against Ashley because Philip is more likely to beat Ashley in a fire making challenge because he d needs to get to the end without Ashley in order to have a guaranteed win. However, we get to the third step of this, which I think is probably the likely scenario if this had actually become a twist this early on. And I think that's that Boston Rob gives up immunity to take on Ashley in fire making and completely wipes the floor with her guaranteeing that he wins the game i think that's the most likely scenario here as for him i think he knew at that point he 100 percent needed to get rid of ashley and obviously boston rob is so well known for being really good at fire making so not a big surprise there now from survivor south pacific we have sophie having final immunity and this might be a similar scenario i don't know who's better at fire making than ozzy at this point because obviously everyone knew they had to get rid of ozzy if sophie knew how to make fire i could see sophie giving up immunity to take out ozzy in the final four fire making challenge 
if she doesn't, then I think more than likely she saves Coach because it was very clear that she was more willing to take Coach to the end than Albert, which means we get an Albert versus Ozzy fire making challenge. And again, I, I think more than likely Ozzy still wins. I think more than likely Ozzy wins fire against anybody, but it's not a guarantee, but it is a very good likelihood. And through that, I do think Ozzy wins. If Ozzy gets to the end against anybody, he wins the jury vote. And he more than likely does that here. Now, Survivor One World. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Kim wins anyway. Kim has Final Four immunity. It doesn't matter who she saves. She probably saves Chelsea. It doesn't matter. Christina versus Sabrina fire making. Who cares? Kim wins against everybody. Doesn't matter at all. Now for Survivor Philippines, Scoopin obviously saves Lisa, which leaves us with a Malcolm versus Denise fire making challenge. And essentially the winner of this challenge wins the season. I'm inclined to believe Malcolm wins the fire making challenge. Though again, it's another one that's like, it's up in the air. It really is so close that it's like, is there really a point in speculating? But if Malcolm gets to the end, he wins a jury vote. If Denise gets to the end without Malcolm, which was obviously going to happen if she beats Malcolm fire making, she wins the game. It really is the determining factor of who wins the season. Now for Survivor Care Moen, we have Cochran having final immunity. And I think he saves Don. I mean, this one's a bit up in the air. I mean, I could see him saving Sherry as he thinks that like Don is probably a bigger jury threat to him at the end. But at the same time, it's like, was she though? So I think he saves Don to look more loyal. And then we get a fire making challenge between Eddie and Sherry. And I think Eddie wins, right? I mean, like, I mean, at least Eddie's in that archetype that you would assume would win a fire making challenge. Now, obviously I could be wrong, but it's like, I, I feel like Eddie was more likely to win a fire making challenge than any of the people here at the final four. So through that, he does make it to the final three. However, I do still think he loses. I know there's some people that believe that Eddie wins if he gets to the end. I, I don't see any scenario where he wins. He does probably get the vote of Reynolds. I, I just don't see how he gets any other vote. Even people that were super close to him and Andrew and Malcolm have talked about how they were never voting for him to win. It's just not a likely scenario. Cochran still wins the season anyway. Now from Survivor Blood versus Water, we do have Tyson having final immunity. And this might be a Boston Rob scenario where I, I think it's very likely Tyson goes to fire to beat Tina. Because I think this is, again, another scenario where Tyson knows he needs to beat Tina in order to win the game. He needs to get the end with Jervis and Monica. So I do think it's very likely that Tyson gives up immunity to take on Tina. But if he doesn't do that, I do think he more than likely saves Jervis. But again, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I think at the end of the day, they need to beat Tina. If Tina gets to the end of Tyson, I do think the jury vote is very wonky there for him. I just don't know if he can get the votes. Because you obviously have the RS Vetus Katie contingent voting for Tina plus also the Laura and Sierra contingent leaning that way, which is not a great scenario for Tyson to be in. So I do think for Tyson, he probably needed to put himself in fire in order to beat Tina there. Now for Survivor, Kage on the final final two we're going to be talking about. And here Cass has immunity and she does end up saving Wu, I'm pretty sure at this point, which means we get a fire making challenge between Spencer and Tony. And considering now we know that Tony sucks at fire, even though he does obviously beat Sarah in Winners at War, like he's talked about how he had no clue how to make fire before that. It's obviously a scenario that Spencer beats him. And if Spencer beats Tony in that challenge, I think there's a very good chance that Spencer wins final immunity. Obviously, it's between Spencer and Wu. If Wu ends up winning final immunity, he takes Cass to the end and ends up winning against Cass. Unless Spencer's able to do a Tony and manipulate Wu into taking him. But I don't think it's as likely coming from Spencer as it would have been from Tony. Also, if Spencer ends up winning final immunity, he also probably takes Cass to the end and wins probably unanimously. But either way, I do think in this scenario, Tony loses that final four, which is... Obviously something that would radically change Survivor history. And through that, I do think Spencer becomes the much more likely person to win the game. Now from Survivor San Juan del Sur, we have Jacqueline having final immunity. And I do think she saves Natalie. Now this is the thing. Jacqueline, I do think, is someone that was self-interested enough to where if she thought she was going to win the game, she would have cut Natalie. However, at the Final Four, she knew for sure that both Keith and Natalie were going to beat her at the end. So I do think in this scenario, Jacqueline probably thinks, well, it's better to take someone that I want to win to the end. So through that, I do think she saves Natalie. We get Keith versus Missy in fire making. I think more than likely Keith beats her. And through that, we get a Natalie Jacqueline Keith final three, where I do still think Natalie squeezes it out at the end. Obviously, Jacqueline gets the vote of John, but I don't think she gets any other vote. Really, the entire season comes down to who do Josh and Reed vote for. I'm inclined to think that they vote for Natalie, though there is definitely still a chance that they vote for Keith. So I do think that's kind of up in the air, but I am inclined to think Natalie still wins that season. Now for Survivor Worlds Apart, 
I mean, we get the same result. I mean, Mike wins final immunity. He more than likely saves Will as he thinks Will is the least threatening person there. And we have Carolyn still beat Rodney in fire making. It's the same result. Not much of intrigue there. Now for Survivor, Cambodia, where we have Jeremy having final immunity. I do think he saves Tasha. And in turn, we get a Spencer versus Kelly fire making challenge where if Spencer wins the challenge, same result. Jeremy still wins. If Kelly wins the challenge, we get a very, very close jury vote where I do think there it's either 6-4 for Kelly Wentworth or 5-5 five, five, where I, at that point, Tasha decides the winner, which essentially means Jeremy wins. Really, the deciding vote in all this is Joe. I, I do think Joe is the person that can either give Kelly the win or give Jeremy the win. It's really his choice. I'm inclined to think he gives Jeremy the win, but it's very, very close there. But also, this is a situation where, again, Jeremy could also give up immunity and try to take on Kelly in fire making. Though, again, like I don't see why he would do that when Spencer's probably just as likely of an option to beat her. Now, for Co Wrong, where Michelle has final immunity, I do think she saves Sydney. And at that point, we get Ty versus Aubrey in a fire making challenge. I think more than likely Ty beats her. Obviously, we did see that Aubrey beats Sydney, but I, I do think Ty was more likely to win a fire making challenge than Aubrey which means we get a Michelle Sydney tie final three, which I've talked about this in the past. I think Sydney might pull this one out because if we're looking at the jury votes at this point, essentially Joe becomes the swing vote because we have the Julia, Scott, and Jason contingent voting for Michelle. We do have Nick voting for Sydney. We have Aubrey voting for Sydney, and we probably have Debbie voting for Sydney. Now, obviously, technically, the Aubrey and Nick votes could be going to Ty instead of Sydney, but I do think this is a scenario where they would be under the assumption that Debbie was more likely to vote for Sydney, and if they were trying to essentially not give Michelle the win, I do think they would have put their votes on Sydney over Ty, which essentially means Joe decides the winner, and even with all this, though, I, I do think Joe is more inclined to vote for Michelle. We do hear postseason about how close Michelle and Joe were. So I do think in a jury vote where Aubrey isn't there, I, I do think more than likely Joe votes for Michelle. So Michelle wins anyway. Now for Survivor, Millennials versus Gen X, we do have Ken having final immunity. I do think he very easily saves Hannah. And then we get an Adam versus David fire making challenge where again, the winner of this challenge essentially wins the game. And I'm very inclined to think David wins this challenge. I mean, David was the fire maker for the tribe. I do think he very likely wins, and in turn, David wins the game unanimously. I, I do think he gets every single vote. It's not really close either. I, I do think he is the clear front runner there. And to be honest, I think this is might be part of the reason why the fire making challenge come to exist now, where obviously this and Game Changers were the last two seasons filmed before the fire making challenge was made a necessity. And this was the last time that we get a major, like, big player being taken out right before the end. So I do think this might be the scenario that production thought of, like, you know what? Let's put forced fire making into the game. Why not? But let's move on to the final season to talk about here. We have Survivor Game Changers. Here, Brad has immunity. I think he very clearly takes Troyzan. So that means that we have a Sarah versus Ty fire making challenge. And I'm very inclined to think Ty wins the fire making challenge. Again, he's very much shown to be the outdoorsman and I would think he would be able to make fire faster than Sarah who lost against Tony who didn't even know how to make fire in Winners at War. So I think Ty probably wins this which means Ty might win the season. Again this jury vote's very very close. There's a lot of votes that I'm just not sure where they go. I do think Brad easily gets the votes of Debbie, Sierra, Zeke, possibly Sarah, but even then, I think Sarah could vote for Troy, but then if she knows that Troy's not going to win, I do think she's more inclined to vote for Brad over Ty. I do think Ty, though, gets the votes of Ozzy, Suri, Aubrey, probably Michaela, and now we're getting to the point where essentially Haley and Andrea are the swing votes, and I could see that going either way. I could see Brad be getting the votes there. I could see Ty getting the votes there. I personally probably see it leaning towards Brad, but it's definitely not secure there. It could really go either way. 
Well, there we go. I mean, that is every what if scenario for what if every Final Four had forced fire making. Again, a lot of question marks. I mean, to be honest, this probably doesn't change the result on most seasons. I do think most seasons still play out exactly the same, but there are certain seasons here and there that do have some interesting outcomes, whether that be much closer votes at the end or person who's like the fan favorite towards the end game actually ending up winning the game. But that's it for this what if video. I obviously have many other ones planned for the future. Future. But for now, that's the video. Thank you for watching.